Should Suzanne in Michigan do Roth conversions in 2025 and 2026 since she's widowed and won't be married filing jointly? How should she pay the tax on her conversions? Jennifer in Washington State is 55 and her husband is 70. Should she retire now and do aggressive Roth conversions before her husband passes? We're talking about the widow's tax today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 501. Plus, answers to questions from our YouTube viewers. What's a brokerage account? What's a good way to pay tax on RMDs? How does the 10-year rule work on inherited IRAs? What are extended market index funds? The fellas also spitball on the 4% rule for retirement withdrawals. Listen in your favorite podcast app or watch us right now on YouTube or Spotify. To ask a money question or get a retirement spitball analysis of your own, click the Ask Joe and Big Al link in the episode description. I'm executive producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson CFP and Big Al Clopine CPA. We got Jennifer from Washington State writes in hi joe big al hoping you can give me a little spitball because retirement podcasts rarely consider my situation okay. she's a big listener to a bunch of retirement podcasts yeah and they don't really address her situation so let's see what we can do all right i brought a little 2018 subaru cross check oh washington you know yeah that's right <laughs> every washington writer calls in with the little subaru that is a common vehicle. Colorado, too. A lot of Subarus in Colorado. It's, great. it's a great car. My drink of choice is Diet Coke. All right. Let's see what Jennifer's got here. 55, salaries 250000 My husband is a lot older. 70! <laughs> Exclamation point. <laughs> and he's retired. All right. 55 and 70. He gets about $2,500 a month from Social Security. He got $3.3 million across all my retirement accounts. Good for you, Jennifer. Yeah, amazing. All in my name because my husband lost all of his day trading. Oh, Ooh, a little sore subject there. <laughs> oh, this old man losing all our money. <laughs> no retirement podcast. Not going to be. Knows in, my situation. Not going to be in his name. Uh, the vast majority. Is in my employer's 403B pre tax. My employer doesn't allow in plan conversions, so I can't do Roth conversions on that money until I separate from my employer. My employer also doesn't do the rule of 55, so I would have to do a 72T tax election. How does she know about a 72T? She's been listening. She listens to I- retirement podcasts. <laughs> 72T. So, what that means for everyone else. Yes. Like all of us is that you can take a separate equal periodic payment out of a retirement account and avoid the 10% penalty. Yeah. So you still pay tax on it. You just don't pay a 10% penalty if you're under 59 and a half. Mm-hmm. But I read something this week is that millions of people avoid or like didn't pay the 10% penalty billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> no kidding. And then the IRS just figured it out or something. Oh, I didn't read the whole article. Got it. I, I probably should have. Did. <laughs> If I was going to mention it. <laughs> Since you brought it up. It was just the headline. <laughs> that headline got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, all right. My expenses are $15,000 a month, but I expect that to decrease in a few years when my 18-year-old son becomes independent. I pay for all his expenses because I want him to focus on graduating from high school. Yep. You think he's got a lot of expenses? You have, you have well, kids in high school. Is it- there's, it's, it gets more expensive when they go to college. Yeah, all right. And then when they come home after college. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He goes to college. If he goes to college, he'll probably be a community college, which I can afford from his forty thousand dollars in the five twenty nine plan. We own a house worth about nine hundred thousand with a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage and a condo worth six hundred grand with no mortgage. Here's the problem. Him. Because my husband is fifteen years older than me and has health problems, he's likely to die much earlier than I will. Oh, boy. Here we go. (laughs) A little morbid. Yeah, a little bit. When he dies, I will have to file single, which will raise my taxes a lot. Explanation. I'll be. uh, (laughs) uh, She's so concerned about taxes. Uh, I want to retire sometime between tomorrow and age 60. Okay, Jennifer, you're 55. Yeah. Fidelity Retirement Calculator says I can retire at 57 and live to 100, but even with significantly worse than average economy. 
Have you ever played with the old Fidelity retirement calculator, Big Al? I, I haven't. Have you? No, no, I no, haven't either. No. It's like, how does Fidelity retirement calculator now? Uh, it's significantly worse than average economy. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure how it's calculating the taxes because I will be married for part of the plan and single for part of the plan. Am I crazy for waiting to re? Retire? Wanting. Wanting, oh, to, wanting retire. to retire a year or two? Or should I retire immediately and do aggressive Roth conversions before my husband passes? Wow. Uh, uh, Jennifer, keep keep working. Uh, <laughs> working is always a better choice, particularly... What, is he, is for, he on his deathbed? Well... I don't know. He does say he's got health problems. Well, and he's seventy. He's problems. And all? he spent all of his money on uh, day trading. So I mean, I mean, let, let me let me. Re- I mean, let, do you think she wants to probably? She's still pissed about the day trading. I think so a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> she's more concerned about her tax rate than her husband. <laughs> Seems I like wonder if she's lived in the condo that's paid off, and he yeah. lives in the other one with a mortgage. Yeah, let me let me rephrase that. If if you if you want to retire to be with your husband who's older and has health problems, yeah, go for it. Your situation looks all right, except for you don't have access to most of your money. So that's a, that's a little bit more of a challenge. If you want to if you want to retire just because you want to do Roth conversions instead of not, no, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, the longer you work, the the less you'll need to dip into your savings, which is actually not really available that much because you're not- here's how she can get it availability of of her savings she retires she rolls the 403b into she gets another job okay <laughs> now we're okay you have you still have to work but but she can work for like a month yeah she rolls the 403b into a 401k that allows age 55 distribution yeah, that's creative i like that. that that does work um, or you start up your own little consulting company. Oh, that's that's my other yeah. You start a, a care facility for your, for your husband. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my! Well, that that there there might be a need. <laughs> so she could start her own four hundred one k. Yeah, she just rolls it right into that bad boy. So the concept is, you got a four hundred one k. You can roll your four hundred three b into the four hundred one k. The four hundred one k will have the ability to have you retire. And you'll be 55 or older and then be able to access that money without penalty. But here's here's the crux, is that she's 55. She wants to spend $15,000 a month. It might be a little bit lower. Um, she needs probably five to six million. Well, probably four and a half million to support that lifestyle. Yeah, but she says it's her incomes in a few years. It'll be expenses will be lower. Yeah, but becomes right, independent. So I don't know how much lower. It is. I, I don't. She doesn't really say. So I don't really. I don't really so you know. take away the social security from. Right, she's got a huge bridge. If she retires at fifty five, oh, well, she does. Takes it at sixty seven. That's twelve years at fifteen thousand, one hundred eighty thousand for the next twelve years. Yeah, it's two million dollars that she's going to need for her living expenses plus tax. Yeah, and she's got three point three million. So you put a little bit of growth on that. I don't. It, the, that math doesn't work for me. Um, it 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 all depends upon how much less she can spend when her son leaves, and when that I don't I don't know how old he is. Does it say seventy? Seventy? No, no, and, and the husband. I mean the son. Oh, son's going to high. Eighteen year old son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, eighteen year old. Eighteen. So maybe it. Yeah, we need to know how much it's reduced, but um, yeah, it's the, tight. It is. It, it's a so tight. no, I do, do, don't retire tomorrow to do Rob conversions. I get it. She's she's worried about the widow or tax, mm-hmm. right? That's a valid concern. Yeah, she's got three point three million dollars. That's a ton of dough. Yeah, yeah. And so it's all in a retirement account. And so when she pulls that out to live off of fifteen thousand or ten thousand dollars a month, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year as a single taxpayer, right? She's not in the twenty two. She's in the twenty four. Potentially going to the twenty eight. Mm-hmm. So she's going to lose a lot more potentially in taxes because of her tax bracket. So you continue to work. You continue to save. Um, uh, or you can roll the money into an IRA. You can do conversions there or, or, or into your new jobs for when you work a couple of paychecks, <laughs> start your own business. I, I'm not sure. Does she have any pre-tax? I mean, uh, after, uh, tax. Uh, after tax? No, it's all pre-tax. Yeah. That's what it looks like. So it makes it harder to do a conversion too. Yeah. You have no cash to pay the tax. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, this is the issue, right? 
55 at $3.3 million. So she was a hell of a saver. So congratulations there, Jennifer. But the, this is a problem that we see quite a bit on the show is that you know most of the savings are in a retirement account and they want to do conversions. They want to be more diversified, but then they don't necessarily have the, the, the excess liquidity or the cash to pay the tax to do so. Right, right. So- well, the, so let's just do the math. The most conservative, say three point three. We'll just say three million at three percent distribution rate, ninety thousand. Let's let's say she could pull a hundred thousand from the portfolio, d- disregarding the fact that it's all in, <laughs> it's all taxable with yeah. a potential penalty. But she could pull a hundred. Husband four one. I mean, uh, Social Security. That's another thirty k. So one thirty. That's probably the number instead of one eighty. Yeah. That, that she can pull out. Maybe she could stretch it to 140, even 150. 180 is a bit rich if you want to retire right now, if that's the goal. Other, otherwise, you work a few more years uh, and you, you know, maybe even cl- to 59 and a half or close to it so you don't have this problem. Well, the Fidelity Retirement Calculator said 57. I understand. <laughs> so, all right. Um <laughs> But it, and that depends upon what your expenses are really going to be. We don't know what what that figure is. Yeah, maybe she. <clears throat> yeah, her her money's locked, right, until she retires, or she leaves that job and finds another job to roll the money into another plan. Yep. Um, and I, that's that's a pain in the. It is just for that. Just for that, right? right. I'd rather. I think I'd rather do a seventy two T. No, oh, that's that's awful as well. I, I know it's awful because you can't get as much as you need. Yeah, and you can't stop it. And now you're now you're only probably I don't know how much you get forty forty thousand instead of a hundred. Yeah, yeah, she needs one hundred eighty. The seventy two T is not going to do anything. I know, either. right? Because that's based upon life expectancy. Right. Not, well, there's not, three not, ways to calculate it, but it's need. still all less than what she needs. Yes, agreed. So, so that's a little tricky. Yeah, I think you're. If she has to retire, you either spend less or you you get another job somewhere where you can roll the four hundred one k. That's not a bad idea, actually. All right. Well, really sorry to hear about your husband. Um, hopefully, he lives a long life. Um, and thanks for uh, thanks for the question. All right, Jennifer. Good luck. Uh, we got Suzanne. She writes in from Michigan. Hey guys, and Andy. I'm sixty five, retired in January, and recently widowed. Oh, sorry to hear that. Hmm. Sixty five. That's young. It is. Our retirement accounts have been combined into my IRA that are taxable at $2.3 million and the Roths are $200,000. I'll be taking my husband's Social Security about $2,300 a month. We plan to switch to mine at age 70, estimate at $3,500 a month. I have very little liquid cash and I've been taking about $6,500 pre-tax per month. I expect that going forward, I'll need about $110,000 a year pre-tax, but our Estimated AGI for this year is 165 due to severance and vacation payout from my job. I'm wondering if I should convert some of my taxable IRA this year and probably in 2025, not just because I expect rates to increase in 2026, but also because I won't be able to file jointly for 2025. If yes, how much? Don't have the cash to pay the tax, so any conversion would have to be grossed up from taxes and I'm concerned that converting too much will uh, converting too much will push me into higher Irma in a couple of years when I'll be paying more proportionately uh, due to what I hear about the widow's tax, essentially higher tax rate because I'm now single. I have a 97 Chevy, 2,500 truck, mm-hmm. 2,500. Chevy 2500, is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, I think so. Never heard of a Chevy 2500. 97. <laughs> in 1990, Mazda Miata. Hey, wow. Got some old cars. It is 2024 today, correct? <laughs> I think so. Look at Suzanne. <laughs> All right. Damn. Okay. Mazda Miata. My college roommate had a Mazda Miata. You could barely fit in that thing. My sister had one. They're small. No. Tiny. Um, my drink of choice is a lemon water. Thank you for your show. I've learned so much and thank you for your help with this question. Well, our pleasure. Wow. It's the widow's, um, mm. the widow's weekend here at your money or wealth. She can't pay the tax, but she is filing jointly in 2024. Mm-hmm. And 
the estimated AGI um, she's thinking for this year is going to be one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Yep. So you subtract the standard deduction for married and whatever she put into her four hundred one k. I don't know. I'm guessing that's going to be about one hundred and twenty. Yeah, could be under twenty. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. That's twenty two percent tax bracket. Yeah. So the top of the twenty two for married couple uh, is two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Top of the twenty point four percent is about three hundred eighty thousand. I, I here's the tough part is there's no cash to pay the tax. I yeah it's uh, it's a little tough. I I do like the idea of converting this year because the rates are lower. Maybe you go to the top of the twenty two. Top Joe. of twenty two, and that's all I would. You do know well. that two hundred thousand. So maybe she could do sixty seventy thousand something like that. Yeah, but then you subtract out the tax. And I know. You convert forty and pay twenty in tax. Well, I mean, you have to do the math, right? But yeah, you you're you're gonna have to figure out the convert. Yeah, let's just say you convert sixty. You're probably only gonna be able to convert uh, have forty to forty five thousand go in the Roth, and the rest goes to tax. Not something we normally like to do. But given your circumstance, uh, you might want to consider it. Plus, if you do that, uh, you would stay in the lowest um, Irma category, so that would that would that wouldn't affect that. But then after that, it gets gets tougher, right? Because as you say, you're going to be in single rates. Yeah, hundred ten thousand dollars a year. Most of that is going to be taxed at ordinary income. Um, yeah. For single taxpayer, the top of the Twelve percent tax bracket is what seventy thousand. The twelve percent, yeah, or half that. Well, for single, yeah, half yeah. that. For married, ninety four. Singles, forty seven. Forty seven. Yeah. So fifty thousand, and then yeah. Um, so she's going to be in the twenty two percent tax bracket. Yeah. Moving anyway. forward, yeah, until RMDs hit, she is, and then that's going to pop her up. So I would def twenty four. Probably the math makes sense, but. Yeah. And that's a huge bite in tax that you have to pay the tax to pay the tax. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it either. Yeah, yeah. You have to pull money out, pay tax just to pay the tax man. Well, maybe here's another way to think about it. So she's spending 110, Social Security is 28,000, so her shortfall is 982. And if she were RMD age today, the RMD would be about 92. My my point is the RMD is mostly paying for expenses. So the RMD itself is not going to throw her into a higher bracket. So I like the idea of converting, but maybe you don't have to be super aggressive. Right. Okay. Well, sorry about your loss, Suzanne. Um, enjoy that lemon water and the Chevy. That old truck and that yeah, Mazda Miata. Yeah. This is Ron on the weekends with the Mazda with the top down. <laughs> All right. Did you see that document that Big Al referenced when he was talking about tax rates? That is the 2024 Key Financial Data Guide. And along with their email list and their HP 12C financial calculators, that single two-sided sheet is a must-have for Joe and Big Al to be able to spitball for you. You should download a free copy for yourself from the link in the episode description. It shows at a glance this year's tax brackets and capital gains tax rates, retirement plan contribution limits, tax on Social Security, Medicare premiums, and all the current deductions, credits, exemptions, distributions, and exclusions. All the numbers that affect your financial strategies as you plan for retirement. One listener said that basically this guide alone is worth the price of admission to YMYW. In other words, it's priceless. Just click the links in the episode description to download the 2024 Key Financial Data Guide, to ask Joe and Big Al your money questions, and to share YMYW with your friends. Andy, want to kind of open this thing up for us? What are we doing here? Now that we are doing the podcast on video on YouTube, we are getting comments like crazy, which we've been getting for quite some time. And so there's a number of questions that have uh, racked up, and I thought it'd be good if we could get through some of those so that we could get answers for the folks on YouTube. Thank you for so watching, by the way. We're, we're answering questions from our YouTube listeners is what we're doing. Right. Actually, they're YouTube viewers, but yes. Ah. Uh, yeah, yes. technically. They, right. they do listen also. Yeah, they get, oh. Or they could read. Yeah. The, the that's close, close caption. <laughs> or transcript, yeah. Transcript. Okay. All right. Uh, Lou writes in, what is a brokerage fund? All right. I ask as we have to do RMD soon, and I keep hearing roll over to a brokerage account. Is that a brokerage firm? Schwab Fidelity Vanguard? When it comes time to do an RMD, can you pay the required taxes 
with cash out of hand and then just roll over the entire amount into a brokerage account? Okay, yeah, really good question, Lou. Um, I wonder who, who where's she hearing that from, though? I don't know. So, but the the she she basically wants to take a required minimum distribution in stock or mutual fund shares as opposed to cash. It depends. So, if it's in a four hundred one k, the answer is no. Uh, the distribution from a four hundred one k will come to cash, and then from cash, you will then buy the stock. So, so the shares have to be sold inside the four hundred one k, unless you're doing an NUA. Which means that you have company stock within the four hundred one k plan. That's another, you take that and move that into a brokerage another topic account. for another day. So, uh, if you have, let's say, an account, a brokerage account is yeah, Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard. So let's say you have your IRA at Charles Schwab. Okay. And you have to take your RMD of twenty thousand dollars. Okay. And so you could go in kind the twenty thousand dollars shares of XYZ mutual fund and move that directly into a brokerage account at Charles Schwab and pay tax on the $20,000. So, yes, if that's what you want to do, Lou, then you're good to go. Yeah, and a brokerage account really is nothing more than an account outside of retirement. And a brokerage house like Schwab, for example, Fidelity Vanguard, they allow you, they hold the, they're custodians, they hold the stock shares for you. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> All right. Okay, what else we got? We got Jim. Jim 2179er. <laughs> I don't think it matters where the tax for a conversion is paid from. If I could pay the tax without a penalty out of my traditional IRA balance, I would convert $100,000 this year and next. At the end of the day, all that matters are the final balances. Would you be better off having $100,000 pre-tax or $70,000 raw? That's what matters. Jim. I love it. I knew yeah. you were going to love this one. But yeah. it, I don't think sometimes the math always works out that way. Well, it depends upon your bracket. And you have to be 59 and a half to do this without penalty. Correct. And that's what he said. Yep. So what would you rather have, a $70,000 Roth or a $100,000 IRA? Uh, me personally, I'd rather have a $70,000 Roth if those are the two choices. Yeah, me too. Because the seventy thousand is all mine, the hundred thousand is going to continue to compound tax deferred, and then you still have to pay the tax or the the toll coming out of the account. Yep. But if you're paying tax out of the retirement account, you just have to do the math. You pull the money out, then you have to pay tax on that distribution, then to give it to the tax man. So you're paying tax to pay tax. I hate that. <laughs> all right. So you don't want to pay tax to pay the tax on the tax to pay the tax. So. You get the you get the point, right, Jim? Um, but yeah, in this scenario with your math here, that's thirty percent. So you're going to pay thirty percent all in in tax as you withhold. Yeah, I mean, sure. It, I think there's a lot more to this, but but that's that's if, if we're in a bubble, if we're in the YouTube bubble, I'll, I'll buy it. And that's all that matters, Jim. Okay. <laughs> okay, we get Invictus. Is that right? Invictus? That's, that's correct. Yes, Invictus. If we roll over our hair to an IRA, there isn't a 10-year rule. The 10-year rule is only for withdrawals, correct? As a child to a past parent. Uh, so he's a child. So his parents passed. Depends on how old is his child, I wonder, Invictus. Well, probably old enough to write our show, so I'm going to assume. I believe Invictus is 35. Invictus comments quite frequently, and I believe he said that in another comment. He's how old? 35? 35. Okay. There you go. Not a minor. Okay. Does That's he qualify right. for the normal stretch? I don't believe so. Nope. I don't think so. So the 10 year rule is only for withdrawals, correct? Well, the 10 year rule means that the money has to come out of the inherited IRA within 10 years. Correct. So that would be if you uh, inherit an IRA and, and it's not from your spouse, non-spousal, maybe is another way to say that. Correct. So from your parent, and there's a few exceptions. If you're a minor or if you're 10 years, uh, less than 10 years younger than the person that passed away. More than 10 years or less than 10 years? 10 years or less. Let, years me, or let, less. Me, let me say it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he doesn't have to take an RMD and 
for the next 10 years, but it depends on the required beginning date. Yeah, it depends upon is. who who so passed your away. Parent, how old was your parent when, it, when, when your parent passed? Were they already taking RMDs or have they not taken RMDs yet? Yeah, and if your parent, the, the original IRA holder, if they were taking RMDs, you have to take an annual RMD yourself based upon your life expectancy, but it still all has to come out within 10 years. Uh, how about that? Did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> I get the question. These rules are so stupid. I get the question because when you look up the rule, it is so complicated. It, you need like a Venn diagram because you if this, that, if that, this, if this, that, if that, this, and then you still don't know what you're doing. Okay. Now uh, let's go to the next one here. After 20 years, age 24 and 44. Okay. After 20 years... So from age 24 to 44, I yeah. only had access to a traditional 401k, which I maxed out every year. Now I'm 44, I have access to a Roth 401k, and I will max that out every year. I make too much for a Roth IRA, and I'm considering doing a backdoor Roth on some of my existing 401k, but it would be taxed at the 35% marginal tax rate. I'm wondering if my withdrawal miss post-tax and deferred would be enough to keep my taxes down in retirement. I'm wondering if my withdrawal mix, okay, I don't, when he retires, he's 44, he wants to work for home. Um, he's thinking ahead, I think. He doesn't have enough in, uh, so let's say he works until 64 for another 20 years. Yeah, and he's got all this money in Roth, I guess, as well as deferred. I think, yes, if you have diversification. So the, the concept of tax diversification is to have money in Roth IRAs in your pre-tax 401ks, and then some money in a brokerage account. So as you're taking distributions from the account, it's all not locked in your retirement account because then you're just stuck at ordinary income rates. And the more money that you take out, let's say for trips or vacations or for inflation or whatever the case may be, the more dollars that come out, the more tax potentially you're going to pay. So if you have money in different areas, you can control your tax brackets more easily because you can pull your retirement account and stay in whatever bracket, and then you can pull from your brokerage account or a Roth account and stay in those lower rates. So having a diverse mix of Roth and 401k dollars is key. He's 44, so he's still very young. And if he's going to work for the next 20 years, yeah, max out all Roth and Go from there. Yeah, I like that. And and the reason why this works, it's not like you're going to take half out of one and half out of the other. You're going to fill up whatever tax bracket you're in, probably with the deferred part, pay taxes on, and maybe do the Roth for the balance. Of course, th that, there's a lot of variations on this, but that's the concept, right? You can control your taxes by how much you take out of each account. The presidential election is next Tuesday, November 5th. How might a Kamala Harris presidency or another Donald Trump presidency affect your taxes, your wallet, and your retirement savings? Watch Cancel the Noise, Economic and Market Impact of the 2024 Election with Pure Financial Advisors Executive Vice President and Chief Investment Officer, Brian Perry, CFP, CFA. It's on demand. Learn how the candidates' policies may impact the deficit, the national debt, tariffs, tax reform, inflation, and the U.S. economy and the financial markets. Click the link in the episode description to watch Cancel the Noise, Economic and Market Impact of the 2024 Election Webinar, and don't forget to vote. Then calculate a free financial blueprint to find out your likelihood of retirement success. Input your financial details and receive a comprehensive report with three possible future scenarios, including taxes and actions you can take now to help achieve your retirement goals. Take control of your retirement future with a financial blueprint today. Click the link in the episode description to get started. Let's see. Hi, Andy. Big L and all-knowing Joe. Ooh, he knows uh, how to pat you on the back. This would be a question for you, Joe. This, I love it. This would, <laughs> this would make every Monday of mine so much happier if I just read this right when I get up. You want me to read it for yeah. my sermon? Yes, please do. All knowing. I have a question that I would love if you maybe touch on. What are extended market index funds? Why should we have or not have them in our portfolios? Okay. All knowing, Joe. No clue. No <laughs> idea. Let me tell you what an extended market index. Oh, you've got some research here. See, I don't read any of this stuff, and Alan spends like months 
I have no other job. Remember? It, yes, That's what yes. you told me. An extended market, I can make something up. Here no, we, well, here's what it is. It, can... Extended market just simply means it's an index fund that favors like smaller in value, things that are not in the S&P 500. But who made that up? I don't know, but so that's, it's like that's what it cap, is. Emerging yes, I mean they, they already have it. <laughs> okay, I understand. Yep. So yep. in extended, so in the extended outside of the the or you standard could, core market, or you could do the Wilshire two thousand or oh, yeah. five thousand or no, yeah. get the same thing. Russell. Okay. Yep. What? Yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, it's the all knowing Al. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We got one more. Can we post yep. this. Yeah. All right. So uh, perhaps I missed a nuance here, but it makes me a little nervous that there was some hesitation in your voice that taking less than 4% distribution would be sustainable for 40 plus years. Was this was specific to a question where somebody asked whether or not they could afford to have a 40 year retirement. Okay. But the rest okay. of their question is, is very um, important here. Okay. I was under the impression that less than 4% might be on the conservative side, considering that other financial advisors might recommend as sustainable. I do not appreciate that you mentioned that future market. I do market appreciate. Oh, I, I, I thought this was going to be a negative Nancy. <laughs> I do appreciate that you mentioned that future market performance and lack thereof can make a major factor in the long-term success of the retirement. However, I also thought, that the longer the span of time, the more chance you would take advantage of averages in market gains. Thanks for the great content. This is just a comment. Yep. But 40-year retirement at 4%, yeah, you're probably right that you, over that time period, you're going to receive the market averages. But averages don't mean anything. They don't. It, it's just math. As you're taking dollars out of your account, you're retired. So that means there's a demand for the portfolio. So as you're accumulating, averages are great. Right? Some years you get 5%, some years you get negative 7 some years you get positive 20 and so on and so forth. And over your 10, 20-year period, let's say if you average 8%, you average 8%. It doesn't matter when those av or when those Market returns hit the account. You average 8% because you weren't taking dollars from it. But what happens, it's called reverse dollar cost averaging. When you start taking dollars out over a 40-year time period, averages mean nothing. Because let's say if you take out your 4%, which Al and I thought would be more aggressive or we didn't feel comfortable with that over a 40-year time period. Maybe it's closer to 3 so let's say you have a million dollars, hypothetically, and you take 3% out or $30,000 out of the account, but then it drops 20%, all right? So if it drops 20% and then the next year it gains 20%, most people think, hey, I got my money back and I only took 3% out, so I'm fine. Al, if you lose 20%, how much do you need to get your money back? It's not 20. It's about 25%, I think. Because you're working at a lower balance. 20% of a million is not, right? And then or is at 800,000, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, at 20%, 800,000. 20% of 800,000. 160. Is not you're, enough. You're not there. And then you're also taking your $30,000 out of the account to live off of. So you need a lot higher rate of return to get caught back up. So- that's why you look at a lower distribution rate. Now, if markets go up for you know a, a consistent period of time, three, four, five years, all right, you could take probably a little bit more. Maybe you stuff a little bit more into cash where you can kind of cushion your, your lifestyle. That's why retirement income planning is so different than like accumulation because you have all sorts of different types of risks. Right? That's called sequence of return risk. So, I don't know. I just babbled on. I think you did pretty well. Or something I, there. I'll just add one more quick thing, and that and that is this. When we talk about the 4% rule or 3% if you retire younger, this is just a guideline to figure out if you're close to being on track. The real truth is when you get to retirement and you're pulling money out, it should be a more dynamic approach, meaning it's something you look at every year depending upon what the market has done, what you want to spend, what you're invested in. There's a lot of things that can affect this. The 4% rule is not necessarily that magical. It's just a guideline to t tell you if you're kind of on track. Is that it for us today? That well, is it for you, Joe. Yes. Thank you very much for answering all those. All of our YouTube uh, viewers are going to appreciate it. 
All right. Awesome. Uh, we will see you all next time, folks. Show's called your uh, what? Your money or <laughs> your money your wealth? Oh man, I'm tired. This show that is your money, your wealth wouldn't be a show without you, and we love that you're a part of it. Bauer and Laney in Illinois, Brad in Michigan, N and N in San Francisco, and Elizabeth in Connecticut join Big Al Spitball for you next week in episode 502. When you share YMYW with your friends and leave your honest reviews, comments, and ratings for Your Money, Your Wealth on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the like, it helps us reach more listeners and viewers like you, and we appreciate you for it. To really make the most of your money and your wealth in retirement, schedule a free financial assessment with the experienced professionals on Joan Big Al's team at Pure Financial Advisors. They'll go beyond a simple spitball to provide you with a comprehensive analysis of your income, expenses, assets, and debts so you've got a clear roadmap towards your retirement goals. They'll help you understand your comfort level with investment risk to craft a plan with you that's aligned with your needs, goals, and risk tolerance. Click the free assessment link in the episode description to schedule your financial assessment today. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this podcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. As rules and regulations change, podcast content may become outdated. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the podcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision.